Osprey RF over fiber webinar. I'm Gary Mason and I'm going to be with you for the next 10 minutes. So thank you all for joining us. Okay, I'm going to kick off the webinar with the five W's, which is a nice overview of why we are doing this, where we've come from, what we are offering, and, and when is it available. So, ETL Systems in Hereford, England, has been delivering RF distribution products for high resilient SATCOM applications for over 20 years, as most of you know. Here at ETL, we have recently been developing an RF over fiber product range to enhance our portfolio. So why do we need fiber? Okay, we need fiber to deliver high quality transmissions over a long distance with minimal loss, cost, and size. A typical example of an application might be for carrying traffic between L and B at the antenna, maybe on a rooftop or a long distance across site, to the RF equipment with maybe an ETL matrix in the control room. Who are our customers? Well, our customers are you guys, global operators, broadcasters, telecom operators, satellite operators, and other military and government users. And when is it available? Well, it's available now, and at the end of the webinar, you'll be able to contact us for more details, pricing, data sheets, and so on. So, let's have a little bit, a look at a little bit more detail about why fiber, and compare the limitations of coaxial cable to the advantages of optical cable. So on the left here, we have uh, the limitations of coax. Um, and there's a picture there of a bundle of coaxial cables. And on the right, uh, we have the advantages of optical fiber. Um, and an image there showing a representation of the size of an optical fiber compared to a human hair. So coaxial cable, uh, some limitations are that it's relatively high loss. It's got a restricted bandwidth. Um, it's bulky and inflexible. Relatively expensive. Has a range of typically only two kilometers. And one of the fundamental things of a copper cable is that it conducts lightning. If we compare this to the advantages of optical cable, this is a low loss transmission medium of typically a couple of tenths of dB per kilometer. Um, it's capable of carrying very high bandwidth transmissions, typically many terab terabytes per second. Um, it's relatively small in diameter, only a couple of hundred microns. Um, it's relatively flexible and cheap compared to coax. Um, and it can cover, the key is it covers a range of many tens of kilometers. And um, again, no uh, lightning problems with with a glass fiber. Um, it is important to say at this point that um, with the introduction of this technology, we're not cutting out coaxial cable entirely. We're just giving the ability to carry RF signals over a greater distance. That might be at new sites or expansions of your existing facilities. By using our Stingray product to convert RF over coax into RF over fiber. So let's just take the slides away for a minute and have a look at the hardware in the Stingray product range. So there are two series in the product range. The 100 series, which is a low cost, high performance option for high density compact applications um, with options for fixed 18 volt LNB powering. So let's take a look at the 100 series chassis. This is the 100 series 1U chassis. It has dual redundant hot swap power supplies and a front local control panel. If I spin this round, you can see the back of the unit. Okay, on the back of the unit, on this particular one, um, we can see the hot swap uh, RF over fiber modules. Uh, this is part populated with four modules. Um, it has a capacity for expansion up to 16 modules. 
Um, it can be populated with a mixture of transmit and receive modules for uplink and downlink applications. Um, and your RF cables will simply just come in and plug in, and your optical cables here will plug in to this to the modules here. Um, there's also an Ethernet port for remote monitoring and control, um, and a web browser interface, and then also the PERM. So now let's uh, talk about the second product in the range, the 200 series. So the 200 series offers increased capacity and further flexibility. Um, it's available also in 1U and a 2U chassis with a capacity for up to 32 links, um, as well as an outdoor unit uh, for links that, that you need close to the antenna. The outdoor unit is an IP65 rated enclosure to protect it from the elements, the wind and the rain, um, and it has options for integrated heaters to allow it to be installed in environments with low temperatures down to minus 60 to minus 40 degrees. The 200 series also adds further enhanced features such as the ability to house dual transmit and dual receive modules or even a transmit and receive integrated module. Um, single modules can add a 20 dB RF monitoring port. Um, it also adds additional features such as 13, 18 volt switchable LNB powering, 10 meg distribution, uh, Ethernet over fiber, and also adds options for redundant configurations in 4 plus 1 and 1 plus 1 configurations, building upon ETL's switch matrix foundations. So let's take a look at the ODU. This is the ODU enclosure. Open up the front door. Um, on the base of the unit is where the cable entry plate is. So your RF, um, optical and power cables will enter the cabinet from the base of the unit. Um, the RF and optical cables will interface with a, a panel here on the sides. Um, and then short jumper cables, both RF and, and optical, will jump across to each of the modules. There's capacity for 10 modules, um, and they can also be configured in redundant configurations in the ODU. Um, it's got the same dual redundant hot swap power supplies and the same um, user interface uh, that's also suitable for rem uh, um, interfaces with the Ethernet for remote monitoring and control as well. Okay, so that's the 200 series. If we come back to the slides now and take a look in more detail at the modules. Okay, so here I have a pair of modules, um, a transmit and receive pair. Again, just a reminder, these are going to be separated by up to 10 kilometers. Um, the transmit module takes an RF signal in, puts an optical signal out. The transmit module comprises of a laser light source. So a semiconductor laser provides a bright light at a fixed wavelength. And that laser is the most important component in creating a good quality fiber link. And there's an image there on the screen showing you um, a, uh, the width of a laser um, coming out of the cross section of the semiconductor laser compared to uh, the width of a human hair. Um, and then if we have a look at the receive module, uh, the receive module takes the optical signal in and puts an RF signal out. So the receive module comprises a photodiode. So when light coming in from the fiber falls onto a reverse bias diode, it causes a current to flow, which is sent back out on the coaxial port. Okay, 
So there are various number of connector types which are available, which we'll talk about now. Um, over the years, a lot of different RF connectors and fiber connectors have been developed and introduced. Um, essentially, the connectors are all doing the same thing, interfacing one component with another and connecting the two. Um, often mating adapters are used, but we offer a wide range of connectors, RF and optical, to suit your individual applications. So RF connectors offered are 50 ohm SMA and BNC and 75 ohm BNC and F-type. Optical connectors, we offer the two main common types, which are FC, which stands for ferrule connector. Uh, with that, really, you just need to be aware of the mating key when connecting the cable to the interface. Um, and the more common SC connector, subscriber connector, which has more uh, a push fit connector. And again, a, and a range of adapters are available to connect between your different types of equipment that you, that you have in your facility. Okay, so that really concludes uh, most of what I wanted to talk to you about. But uh, we've got a number of, um, of our uh, interested parties joining us today. So I'd like to just ask if we have any questions. I'll just... Uh, so, yes, uh, we do have uh, dedicated modules that will um, transmit your 10 meg um, reference signals from your, your source in your control room across site up to 10 kilometers again, alongside your L-band transmission um, to provide 10 meg reference signals to your LMB and your buck. And we recently sent out um, a news weaver to all our customers um, with a nice um, overview of that type of application. So do feel free to uh, ask us for that um, information. Okay, so I think that concludes our webinar. Um, if you have any further questions, then obviously feel free to drop us an email at info at etlsystems.com and we'll be happy to provide you with pricing and data sheets. Um, all our data sheets are available online on our website, etlsystems.com.